All right. Thanks, everybody, for joining in once again with special guest from Astronauts Gone Wild, Bart Sabrell. Thanks so much, Bart, for joining me today. Bart, you there? Yeah, I'm here. Sorry. <laughs> yeah, no worries. No worries, Bart. Yeah, go ahead. Just want to do that quick introduction, let you jump right in into uh, your production of, of Ast Astronauts Gone Wild, of course. A funny thing happened on the way to the moon. Of course, that was was your first production. And let's get right to it. How you basically got involved with all this and your, you know, your belief in Jesus Christ, the Bible, and we'll go from there. All righty. Well, I just wanted to say hello to everybody out there. Uh, like you, I'm also a fan of RV. So when I uh, first heard about RV, I realized that this guy has incredible insight. The things that he picks up on about the Illuminati symbolism and things and so forth uh, are, are so incredible. Uh, I originally heard about RV by, by his video questioning the authenticity of uh, Astronauts Gone Wild. And when I watched it, and I actually only watched it all the way through a few weeks ago, and that's when we started our contact, there are parts that, that he thought were absolutely real, and yet he wondered how I got access to all these people. And I kind of wondered that too. I could go into an explanation of that in a little bit. But basically, you know, RV and I, even though we disagree about the shape of the earth, that's virtually the only thing we disagree about. We yeah. both believe in God. We both believe that the Bible is the word of God. We both believe that Jesus is the Messiah. We both believe we're in the last phase before the Messiah returns. We both believe the moon landings are fake. We both believe the United States government is corrupt. We both believe the Illuminati Pope, deep state, whatever you want to call them, control the world. And I'm sure there are many other things that we agree upon. And what I realized, especially as a believer, is that we can't have a dispute. Uh, we could find the scripture, I could bring it up, but it says, I think it's in 2 Timothy, don't dispute about words and meanings. And fortunately for us, geography exam is not part of taking hold of eternal life. You know, neither is mathematics, neither is understanding science. or the, You know, the, the main thing that you need to do to accept eternal life is simply repent of your sins, don't go back to them, become a new person, and the blood of Jesus will take care of all of your past and future mistakes as long as you can continue in sincerity. And that's the main thing. Uh, a lot of people out there are fans of The Simpsons, and their creator also came up with a program called Futurama. And, uh, you know, the Bender character to me is really funny. And there was one episode in particular where he's calling his you know co-workers meat bags mortals because he's a robot he'll live forever he says if i'm run over by a steamroller they just pop out of my memory cartridge pop it in a new robot i'm good to go and then his owner says oh i'm sorry here bender but you're one of the first models you don't have a removable memory cartridge so when you die that's it and he says, well, how long have I got? And he says, well, you know, maybe only a million years. And then he's like, and then what? And then the bender said something very profound. He says, anything less than immortality is a complete waste of time. And that's what we need to realize. We can debate the shape of the earth or are the moon lightings real or not is Noah's Ark, you know, on top of Mount Ararat. All those things point to wicked entities controlling the world. But the most important thing that RV and I can talk about is eternal life and making sure that every person listening to us takes hold of eternal life. Absolutely, Barton. I agree 100%. And, and that's the thing is, um, just briefly, I want to explain to people, you know, Bart and I, of course, before doing this live stream, we had about, I don't know, maybe an hour conversation covering many topics and finding out we have so much in common. Um, and again, the one thing that Bart mentioned is one thing we don't agree on is the shape of the earth. Um, but I did also state, and I said it in podcasts before, um, the shape of the earth um, will not save your life. It's it's important to me, but as, as in the big scheme of things, you know, if you believe in the flat earth, but you, you deny Christ, you, you don't believe in God, it's not going to get you far at all. So that's that's where we stand on that. And again, this is not going to be a, a debate. On, on flat earth, ball earth, anything like that. It's We're going to cover many more topics. But one thing I'll, I will jump in and say is I do believe um, the whole purpose of the moon landing was to get that image of, of the ball earth. And that's the whole reason behind it. That's my view. 
um, you know, as far as, as, as Bart's, you know, uh, your concern, Bart, as, as far as your belief on, on why they faked it, um, you can have, you have your own opinion on that. But one thing I want to get into is, um, you know, again, you, you mentioned uh, the deception with politics, the left and right divide, and basically uh, splitting the country 50-50. It keeps the eyes off those that rule and, of course, us busy fighting each other. And I think that's a huge um, aspect where I always say this, Bart, and everybody else listening in, ego is the biggest enemy of truth. People don't. Once people are down a certain path, it's very hard to turn around when they're involved in politics. For example, if you're a liberal or conservative, a Democrat or Republican, whatever the case may be, uh, once you're down that path, it's very hard to turn around and say, "Yeah, I've been deceived. I believe in these crook politicians." And and uh, you know, people can't. A lot of people can't go there. So that's that's the main thing about truth. It's a very hard a path to go down because they're already down a false path in this world life system. Well, I think yeah. that's why Jesus said you have to be like a little child to enter the kingdom of heaven, because a little child is like, I don't know how to fix this door. Show me. A child is teachable. And the Bible says that God opposes the proud, but gives grace to the humble. So I thought one day, RV, I said, well, what's, what would I say the definition of pride is? And to me, pride is simply the unwillingness to be wrong. And humility is the willingness to be wrong. You know, I went to this one church and I thought, well, this must be the closest church on earth to God because every sermon was, you know, 90 minutes. They quoted more scripture than any other church. They showed different translations. They had an answer for everything, but I realized it wasn't necessarily the right answer. They prided themselves on having an answer. And one time the preacher asked, he says, who here? likes to be wrong and i was the only person willing to raise my hand and and they're like well why do you like to be wrong i said well number one i'm i'm no longer walking around in error and then number two i'm learning something new but they you could never teach anything new to these people because they had it all figured out already yeah know? yeah and that's the thing is, is it's i always say this it's, it's okay to come to new conclusions based on new solid information but the problem is most people, they're just stuck and they're like, again, I don't want to be wrong and and they're just going to protect th their paradigm. And, and that's that's the major problem with people is, again, ego. And, and you said a pride and, and that's that's the downfall of many people is that pride and and, and not believing. And I said this uh, in so many podcasts, but it's worth repeating um, about, you know, uh, what the creator created for us, fruits, vegetables, nuts, seeds and grains. These things perfectly supplement us. How can this just be some amazing coincidence that we came from this uh, explosion from nothing and, and we have all these things that are just perfectly for us that sustain us and myself, Bart, being 46 years old, uh, never been in the hospital in my life. Thank God for that. Um, you know, keeping, you know, eating things in the most natural form, uh, less cooked as possible. Don't kill your food. And, um, and just knowing that God uh, created everything for us and, um, that's, yeah, that's, that's, that's why I eat raw cows, you know. Uh, it's kind of big. It's very filling. You know, that's kind of why oh, I'm boy. overweight. Now I'm just teasing there. But one, <laughs> thing, one thing that came up uh, in our initial private conversation, you know, a few yeah. weeks ago, was that we both agree that God originally made mankind vegetarian. I mean, how many people see the eye to eye on that? It just blew my mind that, uh, you know, RV and I saw so many things in common, including that. Because I remember with the, one of the first Bibles I read, it was a study Bible, and it said right there under Genesis 129, which is, I give you every seed-bearing plant for your meat to both you and the animals. And the inside of a sunflower kernel was called the meat of the sunflower. And then the note there said, all theologians from all denominations agree that God originally made man vegetarian. We have the teeth of a vegetarian, the digestive tract of a vegetarian. And then it says in Isaiah twice in two chapters that when the Messiah restores Eden, the perfect earth, the lion will lay down with a lamb and eat straw like an ox. There'll be no killing of any kind on God's holy mountain. Now, you may think being a vegetarian is, you know, crazy or too green for you. But then that's the very division that the devil wants you to think. You know what I mean? I mean, to, to think that you have to be liberal to be vegetarian, you know, it, I don't know who came up with that or why that's on that side of the aisle. But just so many other 
you know, fruits and vegetables in the produce aisle that you can have many theologies. It doesn't just have to be Democrat or Republican or liberal or conservative, because sometimes it's appropriate to be conservative and sometimes it's appropriate to be liberal, you, you know? So yeah, depending on the situation, I agree a hundred percent. And that that's the big thing is, is you mentioned about is the original diet being a vegetarian diet. It didn't say, Oh, by the way, you need to take a, a vitamin B supplement. You know, everything's in there and this fake science that we're being taught. Oh, you know, it's, they try to throw that in there that, Oh, you need, you're missing this. Well, there's, there's foods actually, uh, natural foods like buckwheat, buckwheat grouts that do contain a vitamin B. There are, there are uh, these foods that do contain everything. So everything we, we need is contained in, in God. And that's the big thing is they try to make a better apple part. They try to make a better, better pear. Well, God made everything perfect. So they're trying to outdo God and they can't. And this mm, is the that, well, you know, it says that in the Bible. I think it's Leviticus 19, 19 or thereabouts. Uh, do not crossbreed species says it right there in the bible do not do it and the interesting thing is if you break god's law and you do it the offspring is sterile if you take i think it's called a donkey and a horse to get a mule the mule is sterile every time you want a mule you have to make those two animals again and apparently the same is true with seed when monsanto starts taking, you know, eel and putting it in salmon, you know, which is an unclean food, according to the Bible, in a clean food, that should tell you something right there, that these seeds become sterile. You have to keep going back to Monsanto to buy their GMO seeds. And, you know, it's not a coincidence. Vegetarians live seven years longer, you yeah. know, and uh, you don't have to be a vegetarian to be saved. However, I believe it was God's original plan. I believe the Bible says that's the way it will be again. There'll be no killing. All animals want to live and be alive, right? And enjoy yeah. life. So why not, if possible, go for that ideal now? Absolutely. Yeah, absolutely. And uh, and that, that that's the, that's a huge thing is uh, definitely in the, in the Bible, like you stated, Bart, it was the original uh, diet. Things have changed. But I always look at, you know, of course, you know, thou shall not kill, you know, and basically that that that's the original uh, a diet. That's what it pertains to is not not killing animals. And that's the thing is too. people like um, they'll go to a restaurant, uh, they'll have their steak or they'll go to a McDonald's, have their burger wrapped up in this nice piece of paper uh, wrapping. But they never for uh, for a second really think about the poor animal that w was killed. That's how I see it. That's how I look at it. People don't like truth. Most people don't like truth. Truth is, uh, unfortunately, a divide as well because uh, people have been uh, brought into this world light system, the satanic world system. And, it, and it's very obvious they're hitting us at every angle, Bart, um, with Hollywood, the music industry, the Satanism. Satanism. Here's the big thing is you hear a lot of um, atheists. Um, they'll say things like, don't push God on me. Please do not push God on me. And then you'll see them throwing up devil horns in pictures and, and going to rock concerts like, say, ACDC or Def Leppard, throwing up uh, devil horns again, sticking out their tongues where the Bible says don't stick out your tongue, and these type of things. So they don't realize while they're telling uh, they're telling everybody, don't push your God on me, they're they're serving the, the false God, you know. And, uh, yeah, you, yeah, everything, uh, I'm sure you'll agree, everything is a religion. I mean, you either believe – and the God who created the universe and you and me. And according to the Bible, this conversation before we were born, that's how clever God is. It says in Psalm 139, every day of your life was written before one of them came to be. And at the same time, we have free will. It's this incredible paradox. So, you know, five times five, there's only one answer. There's only one right answer. However, mm -hmm. there's an infinite number of wrong answers. So God created the universe. I believe God word is the monopoly rules for this game of life, if you want to call it that, and that there is a judgment based on those rules, that Jesus is the only way to heaven, and you can come up with a million other ways to say you can have eternal life, but it doesn't make them so. You can say 26 is five times five or a million at 26. They're both wrong, no matter how close you are to being right, unless you get it exactly, you're not right. And then, you know, the scientists believe evolution, and, and most of them simply believe in evolution to not believe in God. They don't want to be ostracized for believing in God, so the, all they're left with is evolution. But they weren't there when, when the, you know, beginning happened. So it takes faith to believe 
that things created themselves. I mean, that's a big leap of faith, if you ask me. I mean, a car didn't make itself, a watch didn't make itself, and even a chicken didn't make itself. It had parents make it, right? So, and it, then if you get, here's the interesting thing. I saw this film by Stephen Hawking, who believes in, you know, evolution, and the very beginning of it, based on his book, you know, the it opens up with the question, uh, which came first, the chicken or the egg? Well, the interesting thing is they never answer the question. So then I thought I saw, then one day our VA said to myself, well, let me think about this. Which yeah. came first? Now, here's the thing. If an egg came first and nothing was before the egg, then that means there's a creator. And if a chicken came first and there was nothing before the chicken, then that means there's a creator. So regardless of which came first, it means there's a creator. And then I called up the evolution department at my local nationally recognized university, talked to the top professor in evolution, and I said, which came first, the chicken or the egg? And there was this dead silence. Hmm. And then he thought for a moment and says, okay, uh, the egg came first, but it came from an animal that itself did not come from an egg, which means a mammal preceded an egg laying creature which is the exact opposite of evolution so the guy <laughs> answered the question completely wrong and you realize that that film and that book it quotes einstein it quotes newton but it never mentions that einstein newton and da vinci they all believed in god it failed it quotes them as if they supported they twist the truth they quote these three big scientists and inventors and and intellects as if they supported evolution when it's clear uh, the record shows they all wholeheartedly believed in a divine creator and yet they quote them in this movie about evolution to somehow trick people into thinking they supported it when they did not yeah ab absolutely there's always they're always twisting things uh you know changing history uh to to basically coincide with uh, on, on their agenda and and that's that's what's happening this, this world life system and when the bible says you know satan deceives the whole world this is very literal and people have to understand that so a big thing about me is is people have their bibles they, they read themselves but i show um through video demonstrations how what the bible says matches uh in this world this world deception that's happening again the divide white versus black um you know all the religious uh divide um you know men versus women you know i believe the pay scale was purposely purposely set where men, uh, men get paid more than women just to create a divide uh blue blue collar versus white collar every which way to divide it so definitely this is satan's game um and unfortunately very successful um with this with the system we're we're, we're, we're born into um obviously they teach in the schools that we, we came from monkeys and and all that's nonsense so it's it's you know right in front of well, they came from monkeys if that's what they believe but <laughs> <laughs> you know, the Bible says that, that that eventually the world will become so wicked that what is wicked will be called good, and what is good will be called wicked, and that's exactly what we're seeing here in the last times. You know, it's yeah, absolutely. Really remarkable. Yeah, absolutely. And uh, you know, that's the whole thing is with me is what really um, got me when I was younger is is uh, you know believing in a creator, but there's a, a huge contrast. From what the, of course, the the schools teach, in, in the in the in what the Bible says, uh, it, it doesn't, of course, a mesh. And there's a lot of confusion with with a lot of people that attend a church, you know, once a week. Then they go to school. Then what happens a lot is once a, a lot of uh, the youth enter, uh, say, high school, uh, college, they and unfortunately they turn from. Uh, believers to atheists and i've seen this happen in well, that's why it's called university universal thought people go in believing in god they come out three quarters of them not believing in god i talked to a professor at a major university i said okay what if you saw neil armstrong confessing tearfully on national television that the moon landings were fake would you then accept it and he said no I still think they were real. Now, this is a teacher, a professor, an aerospace at a major university. He thinks he knows better than Neil Armstrong. Now, if that's not ultimate brainwashing, I don't know what is. Yeah, it's just unbelievable. That's, again, uh, pride being the big ego. Once people think they have a good grasp on things uh, and you tell them, no, you're wrong, you've been deceived, 
um, they rage, they get angry, they get upset. And a lot of times um, they, they, they don't provide information. They, they get the insults and they call you, Oh, you wear a tinfoil hat. You're a crazy man or you're uneducated when they don't realize they've been indoctrinated in this lie system. And uh, well, more people believe what, what I believe. So I must be right. That kind of thinking, you know? So I always say this Bart, and everybody else listening in, of course, uh, if you fall in the crowd of this world, you're going in the wrong direction. Exactly. You're going the wrong I mean, direction. I, I can't, but that's what astonishes me. These two, you know, fairly consistent, fairly truthful, alternative media, side quoting the media, you're going by their statistics. I mean, when they were allegedly landing on the moon, they had data of the fuel consumption going by. Oh my goodness, they only have 100 gallons left and now 99 and a half. And they had the altitude of the spacecraft too, didn't they? They had yeah. all that fake data. You, you know what I mean? It, yeah. It boggles me that people think numbers are real and that what the mainstream media says is real. I mean, yeah. most people out there who are listening have seen those clips where they repeat the script word for word, whether it's about a Christmas story or about whatever, they're repeating the script word for word. And you look at the lower right hand corner, it says CBS, it says NBC, it says ABC, it says Fox. Now I believe that the CIA has purchased all the major media, all the telecommunications company, I believe they own Facebook, Twitter, those are token CEOs. They own AT&T and all this. Remember, they passed the Unpatriot Act in order to make illegal deeds legal. That's the way these evil people work. They want to somehow justify to themselves and their lawyer-like minds that their crimes are legal. So not only do you have to check the box in order to have these services that we both use and almost everyone uses, and if you read the fine print, it says we have the right to scan your emails. I think that's another word for read. So not only do we yeah. give them legal permission, right? Then they actually own the company. They own Yahoo. So they own the hard drives. And that means they have, it's their property anyway, and they have a right to inspect their hard drive. So the idea, you know, that there's a free press, there hasn't been a free press, which means the fact that there's not a free press, that's a violation of the law because the constitution says we are to have a free press, that that is part of, of a, a healthy government, but we don't. How can it be free when all networks are repeating the same script word for word? They have the exact same stories, the exact same point of view. How can that be free when it's controlled by corporations and controlled by the Central Intelligence Agency? To tell you the truth, RV, when Bill Casing first asked me to do a documentary about this, he says, hey, Bart, you're a filmmaker. You should do a film about this. Well, I studied it for about six months. The shadows intersecting, two of the three astronauts don't give interviews. The Soviet Union was more advanced and all this other stuff. And I'm like, you know, if I start overturning these rocks and I'm a relentless puzzle solver, I could be risking my life. So I turned it down. I called up Bill and I said, this, this could be dangerous. I'm not going to do it. Five years go by. And then on June 3rd, 1989, the day the guy stood in front of the tanks in China, I started reading the Bible. And after reading the Bible three times all the way through, I still wasn't a Christian, but I realized there is a God, there is a judgment, there is right or wrong, and I'm going to die anyway. I might as well die for what is right. Because if they fake the moon landing, that's a profound event in human history and that the people controlling the world are wicked and being not held account for it. And I said, this is worth dying for. I changed my mind five years later, called up Bill. We started doing it. And we had an investor who put up a million dollars, who's a board member for an aerospace company building rockets from NASA, who knows they can't go to the moon today, much less 50 years ago. And he's how we got access to all these astronauts. They charge $2,000 an hour for an interview. And then I thought, just like you thought, well, why didn't they warn each other? Why didn't the CIA warn them? They're listening to my phone calls. And I think because most people in the government are sincere, are patriots, it's only the top leaders who are corrupt, and it disgusts them that they faked the moon landing. Therefore, they didn't warn the astronauts. And the astronauts didn't warn the other astronauts who got caught because they were simply too prideful and embarrassed 
to admit that they had, you know, been suckered into an interview, you know? Well, Bar, let me, let me interject here. Um, I, I would say, you know, like I said, you know, people that see my videos on, on the topic of you uh, interviewing all the astronauts. Yeah. It, it's a, it's a possibility that, Hey, you know, I just been had, uh, I didn't expect, uh, expect Bart to go to, to their fellow astronauts and, and do the same. That's a possibility. Um, I, I definitely, that's something that uh, due, due to shame, but, uh, but definitely, um, you know, uh, the position I, I want to get into. One thing I want to mention too, before we carry on, I have a different perspective. Everybody knows that follows my channel on, on JFK and many of these, of these so-called leaders. I, I believe uh, they're, they're part of it type of thing. And that's a whole other subject, but I want to get into um, the, the whole, the whole basis uh, of your interviews and uh, what went on prior uh, we all see what happened, of course. What on what on prior? You said you've been uh, contacted and to have this set up. You first you you put it on the shelf, then you agree to do it. Then any consequences following uh, the backlash, uh, follow up, like say uh, um, uh, threats of uh, lawsuits or any of that sort. Well, no, I mean when I there were two astronauts, Alan Bean and Buzz Aldrin, who got so mad that they both kind of, especially Buzz Aldrin, virtually admitted twice on camera when we had an interview because my company at the time was called ABC Digital. He thought I was with ABC News. We had two cameras there, professional lights, mics, security guard, and I showed him the window shot of faking being halfway to the moon, which he filmed, and he thought the story for a few minutes had broken worldwide. And that's why he said, oh, and this makes you a real famous person for having discovered this. What an ego you must have to want to become successful in your career like this. Well, how could I become you know, a well-known journalist and be boost my career if I'm wrong? So that's an admission that I was right. And then he said, we were just passengers. And I'm like, well, that I thought you were the pilot there, you know, <laughs> going down there. And then he tries, to, but then when he realizes, hey, you know, maybe the story isn't, wor you know, breaking worldwide. Then he threatens to sue us if we showed those two admissions to the public. And I'm like, you know, take us to court because we'll we'll get twelve people and we'll show them the window shot. We'll show them intersecting shadows that are claimed to be filmed in sunlight. We'll have filmmakers proving that that was shot in a television studio. You want to go to court? That sounds like a great idea. So when he threatened it and uh, the other guy, Ed Mitchell, threatened it, they, you know, immediately backed out because that's the last thing they would want to do. Let's go further expose them. Yeah, I'll further expose them uh, for the treasonous liars that they are. And, and I, one thing I'll say is, and I did say it is uh, during, during my videos when I was questioning the whole uh, thing that went down with you and the astronauts is I still uh, appreciated uh, what you did and confronting them. Uh, and, uh, yeah, it got, they got obviously very upset. You actually got, uh, physically, uh, you got punched by Buzz Aldrin, which you didn't obviously didn't fall down after he punched you. It looked like it you didn't affect you uh, at all. Maybe I'm wrong. Only you can answer that. And also kicked. Um, and I forgot which one was it, was it, it wasn't Alan Bean. Which one was it that actually uh, need you? Well, that would be, uh, uh, Ed Mitchell. I mean, Ed right Mitchell, after, that's right. That's right. Right. right after. I mean, the guy can't go five seconds without lying. He says, I don't hit people. And yeah. then five <laughs> seconds later, he hits me when my back is turned to him. And yeah, then, yeah. The, guy has, the guy has this reputation of being a peace guru. You know what I mean? Yeah. Uh, and and, the, and another reason to know that UFOs, we could talk about this in a minute. You, you know, another reason that proves that they're fake is because he said that they're real. You yeah. Know? He's exactly. And the moon landings are real. He's saying UFOs are real. And I'm like, oh, okay. Now now I know they're fake. You know? Absolutely. And and, and we had a wireless microphone on, you know, that costs like four hundred dollars. It works for probably half, three quarters of a mile, crystal clear. I had a cameraman who was inexperienced. He took the camera. Well, you know, we're being kicked out literally, violently, cursed at, kicked. So we grabbed the camera, it's still recording, and the wireless microphone is still on the astronaut. We, my cameraman puts it in the back of the rental car without stopping the tape. So it's still recording, which means we're recording the audio from the wireless microphone when they went back in the house. And that's when the son says to his dad, Hey, you want to call the CIA and have them waxed, you know, yeah. murdered. And so get this, the Bible says, if a unrighteous person throws a curse on a person who's in the right, it will fall back on them. 
And so the guy who said, you want to call the CIA to have me killed, he died of cancer a couple of years later at the age of 26. Wow. I didn't, that's one thing I didn't know. Um, well, wow, that's, 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 uh, I don't want to use the word almost like karma type of thing, but uh, don't want to. Well, the Bible it. says if you dig a pit, you know, at, 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 with evil intentions. Yes. And if you throw a curse out with evil intentions, it will fall back on you and you yourself will fall in the pit. That's what the Bible says. Yeah, definitely. You know, saying those words is, uh, I mean, that's, that's uh, definitely a threat. But of course, you know, um, even with that airing, um, you know, uh, the ones that run this world, you know, certain people can get away with it. And I thought, you know, that's what, that's what I always look at. It was, it's, you know, people making these threats. I'm like, wait a second, this, this is being aired and, uh, and uh, you know, what's being done about this. But nonetheless, you know, um, just for everybody out there to under, really understand is, is, is Bart's giving his perspective. Uh, you know, many people know I made a couple of videos on this, on the subject with, with Bart um, confirming the astronauts. You know, like I said, it's, it's no secret. Bart knows that, you know, I believed that maybe someone within the government said, hey, we want you to punk these astronauts, basically confront them. And, uh, you know, uh, because they're, they're, they have they have big egos. It's like when it comes to Freemasonry, they have this ritualistic uh, initiation where it's humiliation. And they continue that in public with the roast. So I always look at it as like, look, they're getting barred over here to roast these astronauts. They've never been in space. They've never achieved anything. And we're going to, you know, bring them back down to Earth, so to speak. And give the, teach them a lesson. Don't be so arrogant and cocky for for you guys uh, acting like you guys are big shots when you basically didn't, didn't accomplish anything. And we're going to send Bart to basically uh, punk you guys. That's that's how I yeah, say. Yeah, here, here's what I got to say about that: is you know, yeah. RV is an incredibly perceptive individual. However, a lot of talents are double-edged swords, and you can be overly conspiratorial minded, you know what I mean? Because tell me, I've only, you know, suffered because of this film. I was kicked out of a church after I got punched by Buzz Aldrin. They said I was bringing, you know, disrepute to the church. My family disowned me. You know what I mean? I lost tens of thousands of dollars in video gigs when I got known as the filmmaker who said we didn't go to the moon. And I, you know, I'm, I, I've had at least a hundred death threats. Uh, from this over the years, I have personally been kidnapped and drugged with truth serum. As soon as I found the secret tape of them faking it right in front of your eyes with the CIA, you know, telling them, you know, how to do it, the talk on the on that track that was taken from me. In 1999, after I was drugged and kidnapped, I escaped. All this is in my book coming up in a, maybe four months on Amazon called Moon Man. All this backstory I've never told anybody before. And this may be the first interview I've even suggested all this happened because it did happen. I took my urine to a lab to prove I'd been drugged with this truth serum. And trust me, they don't need to waterboard people. The only reason they torture anybody is revenge. You can bribe Osama bin Laden's mother a billion dollars. You can print that. She'll turn in one son to save the other nine. Or you can give them truth serum because trust me, when they gave me this drug, I, I first I threw up. It was so strong. Started seeing spots before my eyes, and I and they had a clipboard full of questions pre prepared, and I answered every single one of them truthfully because in my hallucinogenic state, I thought they were the good guys. So I escaped. I I urinated in a little jar. I sent it to a lab. Okay, get this. I call back the lab a few days later. And there's this, I say, well, what are the results? And there's this dead silence. And then they say this, RV, well, uh, something has happened. And I said, yeah, well, tell me. He said, well, we had a break-in over the weekend. And the only thing that was stolen was your urine sample. <laughs> wow. <laughs> you see, because it was some exotic drug that could be traced to the intelligence community, you know, the true serum or whatever it is. They didn't even want me having the print out of that. You know what yeah. I mean? One, one thing I want to just jump in here and say this, Bart, is is this is why I really respect you coming on my platform. Um, everybody knows, again, the videos I made and your stand-up guy coming on here giving your um, giving your side of the story. You, of course, there's many sides to stories. There's the one, and then and then, and then from everything you said, all the all all the um, abuse you took, death threats, losing money. Um, but again, I, I want to get back to the foundation. Uh, you kind of touched on it before a little bit. 
But as far as um, uh, you, you, who exactly uh, contracted you to, to basically sponsor you to do this? Because you mentioned how it costs a lot of money to interview these astronauts where it was a two was you said how much it cost two thousand dollars per per how long well i mean the an astronaut will give a sit-down interview for two all of them have the same price like it's some standard rate of two thousand dollars an hour you know uh, god always provides and I, I guess it's fair to say I felt divinely inspired to make a funny thing happen on the way to the moon. Again, I originally turned down the project because I thought it could be true and that it could be dangerous. Five years go by, I started reading the Bible. I became convinced that uh, there's a war between good and evil and that this moon landing fraud represents part of that war, that I'm going to die anyway, and I'd rather die serving a just cause. So I changed my mind and started to do it. I met a gentleman who was a multimillionaire who ended up being a board member of an aerospace company because he's just, you know, genius IQ. And he knows uh, from an engineering point, the lunar module is a joke and uh, that they in no way they can't even go to the moon today, he said. So they certainly couldn't have gone with 1960s technology. And so he's like a, a patriot. The, we we kind of had our own little uh, you know, the project, uh, both films took about 10 years to produce at the cost of a million dollars. And we always equated ourselves uh, with the founding fathers. I was always the John Adams, the agitator, the one who spoke his mind and offended people because I wasn't polite when I when I shared my point of view. I'm, trying to, I'm working toward that. I'm trying to be a little bit more of a diplomat uh, nowadays. But uh, he was kind of like the John Hancock. He was the financier, the rich man. Who, who financed the American Revolution. And so he wishes to remain anonymous, but he's a very good person, you know, immaculate integrity. And uh, like I said, so much, you know, connected to the aerospace business. He's uh, a part of an aerospace company building rockets for NASA, a board member. And that he knows, you know, it's, it's a big con game. And that even people, even fellow board members are totally convinced the moon landings are real. And he, can't believe that they think they're real and they can't believe that he thinks that they're fake. Well, he thought it was his patriotic duty to finance the film. And so after we finished the first film, uh, I had the idea, I guess, from watching courtroom dramas, you know, as a kid, hey, why don't we just track down these astronauts and see if they'll swear on the Bible? Uh, he thought the executive producer of A Funny Thing Happened on the Way to the Moon, he thought it was a great idea. He, he you know, paid for all the travel all the astronaut interview fees. He paid enormous uh, private detective agency fees to track down these people, to yeah. track down the astronauts, where they live, their phone numbers and things like this. You know, most of them didn't want to give interviews like Michael Collins. Uh, you know, I mean, it's really weird if you think about it. Two of the three people on the first, you know, historical great event of mankind don't want to be interviewed about it, don't give interviews, except on rare occasions, including Michael Collins. So we set out we, outside of his house in Florida, you know, for like four hours. And, um, uh, and we did the same at Neil Armstrong's <laughs> house too, you know, and uh, we followed him. We wanted to get him in a public place. We followed him to the local like drugstore, you know, doing a little shopping on the weekend. And that's where we confronted him in the parking lot. Um, so he financed, and then some people like Alan Bean, you know, want $2,000 an hour. They love blabbing about it. They have no problem, you know, getting the best seat, you know, in airplanes that they love being known as this. To me, I would feel incredibly guilty. Uh, there was one astronaut, James Irwin from Apollo 15. And when Bill Casey, you know, wrote his book, We Did Not Go to the Moon and first appeared on the Oprah Winfrey show. He was kind of the head of the spear of we didn't go to the moon. You could say I that, that was kind of passed on to me, and I'm that person now maybe. Uh, but he was the one at that time most recognized for that. So apparently James Irwin from Apollo 15 uh, had a, a, a second thoughts about what he had done. And in August of 1991, he tracked down Bill Casey. He called up Bill Casey. You can imagine my surprise if while we're talking here, my phone rings and it's one of the Apollo astronauts calling me. Well, that was Bill Casey. So, you know, in August of 91, James Irwin tracks down 
the moon investigator, and says, we need to talk. He said the following, I have become a born-again Christian. Wow. And we need to have a serious talk about the content of your book. He said, I'm afraid for my life. Will you please call me at this particular number three days from now? And on that day, the astronaut had a fatal heart attack. Wow. He was the first and the youngest of all the astronauts to die. We know that wasn't a coincidence. So that means Bill's phone and or the astronaut's phone was being monitored. And so that's what I have to live with. You know what I mean? Well, that yeah. the time I found that the, the tape that proves that it was a fraud in my mind, in most people's mind, you know, I had a toddler son, I had a blind roommate and I thought, you know, we'll never know for sure. There'll never be any proof, you know, in my lifetime, I was wrong. There was proof. And you can imagine my horror when it dawned on me, I have proof that the moon landings are fake in my house with a toddler son, a blind roommate, and no security precautions taken whatsoever. <laughs> <laughs> and it was shortly after that that I got kidnapped and drugged and so forth because they wanted to know who had copies of the tape, where they were, and so forth. All of this I talk about in the book Moon Man, which will hopefully be out in about four months additionally. Since this time, and it'll be in the book, someone has come forward, okay, who confessed on their deathbed that they were there at the time the first television fake moon landing was being filmed. He told me the name of the base where it was filmed. He told me the dates it was filmed. He stood beside President Johnson while it was being filmed, holding some of the television cables. He gave me a list of 15 people who are VIP visitors who are allowed in that military base inside those two airplane hangars that they put together. All of this will be in my book. I have since called up a couple of the people on the list. And to tell you the truth, RV, I was afraid to do so. I feared for my life. There were some good guys in the government, good people, good forces in the world who instructed me to make those calls anyway. Apparently they're doing, they're, they're tracing who they call after I call them, if you follow that. Got it. So one of the people I called up was Eugene Krantz, right? Mm -hmm. And I called him up and the phone answers, but he doesn't say anything on the other end, which is kind of an odd way to answer the phone. You don't even say hello, you wait for the other person to speak. I didn't say anything, he hung up. I call back a second time and I say, Gene, and he goes, yeah. And he says, and I'm paraphrasing, is this about the satellite telecom conference with Cernan? Hmm. Apparently these guys have private military grade scrambled video conferencing equipment in their private houses, okay? And then I didn't record it, maybe I should have, but I believe he said Cernan, is this about these, he thought I was a technician calling him to say reboot your system or hold down the green button and unplug it because they're apparently having technical difficulties uh, with some video call when I called him on the landline telephone. And I think he said, is this about the satellite com, you know, teleconference with Cernan? Well, Cernan died like two years ago and I called him like last year <laughs> and it's like, you know, maybe Cernan, Eugene Cernan is not yeah. even dead. You know, because I met most of these Apollo astronauts, he was the healthiest of them all. He was like, you know, looked like a runner. He was in great shape. Well, and the thing, Bart, is, you know, any of these people I, I wouldn't trust as far as I could throw them. They're, they're liars, and they continue to lie on everything. So, you know, one big lie, that they're lying about everything. So I, I don't trust, and I hate to say this, um, getting back to JFK, he's the one that said, and I, I don't mean to, to derail what you're saying here, but JFK is the one who said we're going to land the moon uh, before the end of the decade. And they so happen to land, uh, you know, just prior, what, six months prior. So I look at JFK as someone uh, that was a very clever deception. You have your own, we can have our own. This is the thing is we, we agree on 99% of things, but I always look at all from people like Trump to uh, JFK to Obama, all these people as, as uh, they're, they're puppets, you know, and they're, and they're, and there's public yeah, it's, it's crystal clear that the president of the United States is not the one running the country. That's crystal. absolutely, absolutely. But he's fully aware. And, and the way the way I see it is this is the connection I make because I make a lot of connections, Bart, with before um, 
Trump was so-called elected as president, um, New Gingrich went on Fox News and gave this whole spiel about, oh, how he's a black sheep. He, he's not a Freemason. He can take part of the rights. And that's part of the deception. JFK talking about secret societies. Uh, we have to remember the whole JFK thing was f uh, filmed by a third, third degree Freemason, Abraham Zapruda. There's a lot of things that, that don't make sense, but I don't want to get to that. I'm, I just have the, I just have the, the, um, the perception that the most powerful man in the world, so-called most powerful man in the public eye being the U S president, the most powerful country, they're definitely going to have these people under their wing. That's my, that's my thing. We don't have to agree on that. And, and definitely it's, it's not a debate, but my, my thing is we know there's, there's puppeteers to, to everything that's happening and getting back to um, what I see, I see many photos of JFK walking side by side with Werner von Braun, the the the, the supposed godfather of NASA. So I always question that. I always find it interesting too, but I just want to throw this in. I find it very interesting how Star Trek came out um, in the late 60s, 1966, I believe. And it was canceled um, because it served its purpose of, of basically getting the public ready for so-called space exploration. It, the last episode aired a month prior to the moon landing. So this coincides with social you know, like, pick up where it left off. You know, I did a, I did a commercial once about my movie. A uh -huh. funny thing happened on the way to the moon. And I am paraphrasing what the narrator said at the commercial, but it's something like what is science and fiction, you know, and it's the moon landing, <laughs> you know, it's a little <laughs> bit of science, a little bit of fiction. And that's what I, yeah, that whole thing, uh, the Star Trek that was to, to plant the seed in people's mind that yeah. speed travel is possible, plausible, easy, or whatever. But I mean, it's amazing, you know, with 1960s technology, they allegedly went to the moon eight years after the goal. Here in 2015, they said in 2018 they're going to have the Artemis spacecraft or Orion, whatever, orbiting the moon, and and they can't do it. They're they're, they're yeah. already five years later and they can't even have an unmanned vehicle orbit the moon. You yeah. know what I mean? <laughs> and yet it's, we have five ridiculous. decades better technology. I you know mean, what's funny, Bart? I'm sorry. You know what's funny though is we, where you have, I have video clips of William Shatner, of course, Captain Kirk from Star Trek. He was asked by astronomy.com during an interview at a convention, uh, you know, his involvement in, in, in science fiction and his involvement also in science. He was asked uh, directly, uh, what's your uh, perception of, of science and science fiction? And you go, and, and, and uh, you know, he simply says, there's no difference. You know, they're, they're both the same. This is William Shatner speaking about the science, science fiction. And he also went on to later on and uh, to play an astronaut in um, the Six Million Dollar Man a few years later after Star Trek went off the air. And this, I don't mean to throw this in, but I'm going to throw it in. But he played an astronaut when we went to space. He was asked, what does he see? And he goes, gentlemen, I see Earth, and it's flat, flat as a table. So just a little funny uh, thing they threw in there with the producer, uh, Kenneth Johnson, of The Six Million Dollar Man. He also uh, produced a V the series. So there's a lot of interesting connections with that as well. But not to uh, get off too far off topic uh, with, the, with this whole thing, but there's a lot of connections when it comes down to it with NASA um, and Star Trek, for example. The, uh, the, the so-called uh, Space Shuttle um, Enterprise was named after the, the, the fictional Enterprise uh, from Star Trek. So how does that happen? You have the whole entire crew from the TV show appear in Florida at Cape Canaveral for this um, unveiling of, of the Space Shuttle Enterprise. So there's a lot of connections with, again, so-called science and science fiction. Yeah, I mean, I would, again, we should be, I guess, uh, sum it up soon. I was going to try to see how I can log a comment on here, but I'm not sure. Let's see, private chat, live comments. I don't know if I if I can even leave a comment here. But I'll, I'll, send you, I'll, send some, I'll send you some links, if you don't mind. Sure. I'm putting them in the description of the YouTube video when it's posted, uh, because I it looks like I can't even type in a comment here. Well, you could do in the private one. I'll, I'll definitely... Uh, I'll definitely highlight it. Yeah, if you just uh, here, 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 let me let me post this. I'm going to put this in the private comments. Just copy and paste that in the regular ones if you could do that. Basically, sure. yeah, I, I want to remind everybody. You know, I see some questions going by, and we need to wrap up. What do I think the Earth or the Moon is made of, and what are my three globe, you know, arguments, whatever? We're not going to debate. 
the things that we already know we disagree with. Yeah. What, we, what we do agree with is there is a God, there is a Messiah, the end of all things is near, the government is corrupt, you know, and that you have to repent in order to be saved. That's the main thing. And this is why I want uh, RV to share this link. These are really simple, straightforward Bible studies. I want to share you know, here's the thing. I was taking an acting class. My background is theater, filmmaking, writing, things like that. And I remember for some reason, I was pretty metaphysical, 16-year-old. The only books I had uh, read were about Einstein and the theory of relativity. And a person in that class, a woman said, Bart, you should read the Bible. Now, I was a writer. And uh, so I had the dictionary, the encyclopedia, and the Bible on my shelf just in case I needed to look up something. She says, you need to read 1 Corinthians 13. So I remember that, 1 Corinthians 13. Okay. So I go home. I pull out the Bible. You know, it's like two inches thick, 2,000 pages. I have no idea where 1 Corinthians 13 is. But I open it up, you know, just guessing right to that very page. And, and then, you know, the next time the Bible comes up is I have a Christian client in my filmmaking business who says, I'll give you uh, a favor. I'll, I'll give, give one of your scripts to this famous movie maker in Hollywood. If you do me a favor, read the Bible. I bought a one-year Bible. I started reading it June 3rd, 1989. And five years later, even without being a Christian, I had read the Bible five times all the way through. And that would be the one thing I would say to listeners out there who haven't read the Bible, you know, just pick it up, start with the book of John and the New Testament and read it to the end. Shouldn't take you that long. When you, when you finally see the Bible, you see the, the, unfortunately the Bible gets thrown into the same box as hypocritical corrupt religion. And so any, any preacher on TV who's molested people or stolen money, people associate the Bible with that, but they're two completely different things. And uh, I believe the Bibles are the the Bible is the rule for life, and no matter how many preachers or how many religions are corrupt, the Bible is what it is. And when you read it for yourself, you'll see it's pretty straightforward. It's pretty simple. You know, God is a God full of mercy, and I know from having a few misdemeanors in in life and parking tickets that I tried to argue about in front of a judge. I was always surprised that the judge was more merciful than I expected. And so God would be even more merciful than that. But if you think about world history, okay, all the, all the unsolved crimes, all the unsolved murders, all the unsolved, you know, corporate, uh, you know, uh, embezzling that goes on, can you even remember one time in your entire life where uh, a person who was at large, they got away with murder, they got away with robbing a bank, they got away with embezzling money for some big corporation that they turned themselves in voluntarily out of a, out of a, to have a clear conscience in life. I don't know that that's ever happened. I don't know that that's ever happened once. And my memory that that has ever been broadcast on the news, but that's what you have to do in order to be saved. You have to read the Bible, go with the creator's definition of right and wrong, not your own, because trust me, every sin that a person wants to do, that's the very part of the Bible they say is mistranslated. You know, you know what, I, 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 I want to jump in. I want to jump in and say this because I have um, a lot of people that get upset when I, um, for me being a Bible believer, say, oh, it, it was uh, written by Freemasons. I'm like, look, they didn't write anything. They just they there have been translations. But what I'm what I'm getting at is this: I, I do not believe that God would put us on Earth and have us make up our own rules. And it does say in the Bible, question all things. I did question. I did question. But I come back to: I don't believe a creator would throw us or not throw us, but put us in this world and just make up our own rules as individuals. Uh, what's right and wrong? And and that's that's my stance. People can believe what they want. But I, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to go on that route, and definitely um, I think people are making a huge mistake. And that's the thing is, and you said it, Bart, where people want to make up their own rules. They don't want they, – they read something in the Bible. Oh, I don't want to I don't want to go by these rules. I'll just throw the Bible aside and live, what I, live how I choose to. And that's what it comes down to. Yeah, I would just share that link that I sent you. It's just yeah. really straightforward Bible topics or Bible studies about like who is – you know, the beast of revelation or what is the mark of the beast and things like that. Really simple, but very interesting, short Bible studies. And that's the thing. You have to turn yourself in. You yeah. have to confess your sin to God, 
or to people who you have wronged and then just live a new life. That's what it means to be born again. It means to change your ways. And the, the thing is, you're going to die anyway. So if I had to take one scripture out of the whole Bible that to me stands out the most, it's a Mark 836. It says, what good is it to gain the whole world and forfeit your soul? You know, you could own the whole planet. You could own every continent, every building, every business, every skyscraper, all the emeralds, all the gold. You could have concubines. You could have all the money. You could have anything, but you're eventually going to drop dead. And then what? You know, the all of eternity compared to a glorious life on earth is, is simply a, a one day. All your life on earth is simply one day compared to eternity. And anything less than immortality is a complete waste of time. We could talk about the earth being flat or spherical or what the moon is made of or the challenger. Are they astronauts still alive or not? I saw that question. What it really matters is personally, have you surrendered to God? Have you read the Bible? Have you repented of your sin? Because that's all that's going to matter. Do you make it or not? Jesus says, wide is the gate, broad is the road that leads to destruction, and most are on that wrong path. Narrow is the way to life, and only a few find it. He wasn't talking to the pagans. He was talking to the religious people who already had the Bible. Yes, yeah, I, I agree, Barton. That's one thing I want to really emphasize for anybody that's joining in a little bit late here is, you know, I mentioned earlier for anybody joining late is this is not a flat earth ball earth debate. Uh, Bart and I, we agree on many, many things, 99% of things. Uh, no two people agree on everything. We're not going to turn this into a debate. So people that are talking about flat earth, yes, I'm a flat earther. Bart's not, but this is not going to be discussed. I'm going to make a lot more videos. I'm going to have my own solo live streams. We could talk about it there. This is not the time and place for it right now. Um, and, and again, just want to emphasize that and, and definitely, uh, Bart, what you're saying about um, you know the belief and and what it comes down to like, again, flat Earth versus ball Earth, uh, the world deception. I truly believe um, you know there's a lot of people out there that uh, talk about the Bible, but I truly believe uh, speak about the Bible, the truth of the Bible, and also show them the the, the deception that's happening in the in our real world. So they're not only uh, reading from it, they're seeing it actually taking place, and that's where I come in. Uh, the satanic deception. There's a, a there's an upside down pentagram, of course, over um, over the White House. Um, all the devil horns have been incorporated in society. Donald Trump doing the uh, the six 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 hand sign. Um, of course, to the public, it means oh, everything's a okay, but they have their own esoteric meaning uh, for things that people have no idea what they're doing. So yeah. what, what I'm getting at is, I think it's a really good combination part of you speaking. And me speaking, where, where everybody plays a part in, in the truth, and you're, you're definitely a, a Bible-based guy, and I'm a guy that's showing a lot of the world deception. So, um, for for myself, not to mention Flat Earth again, but this is something that's really turned a lot of people into believers. Um, so again, if I look at it this way, um, everybody listening in and Bart, um, I remember me being a San Francisco Giants fan growing up back in the '80s. Uh, I remember the catcher Bob Brenly would say this to uh, on, on this one radio interview. He goes, I deal with many pitchers, and there's many ways to get the best out of them. Some you kind of yell at, some you got to be kind of nice to, and, and don't get them frazzled. So what I'm getting at, there's there's many ways to get results from people. Um, with you know, and it, what works uh, for you, Bart, works for me. Might be a little bit different, but the main thing we're getting at is getting the same result. Getting yeah, and what I wanted to, and the reason why I, I contacted you, RV, and 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 wanted to have this discussion. Yes. Is, again, let's summarize. You know, we know in alternative media, alternative thinking, that the whole you know Republican Democrat that's a con game so that people don't unite against the deep state, the Illuminati who control the world. But let's not let that happen among our group, the alternative media truth seeking group. You know. RV and I agree about 99% of the things. So he thinks the world is flat. I think it's a sphere. Maybe someone thinks it's a triangular cube. So what? The important things are there is a God. There's a battle between good and evil, a battle for your soul. You have to turn yourself into God, surrender, repent, have a new life. We agree on all of that. Don't 
not talk to your brother simply because you disagree about this. Yes. Some people think the Sabbath is Sunday. Some people think it's Saturday. As long as you believe it with all your heart and are repenting of your sin, the Bible says God looks the other way if you're mistaken. You know, yeah, I agree. Uh, there you know, you go. Let's all be friends. Let's all be brothers. Let's not take it too seriously. You know, yes. God yes. invented a sense of humor. You know what I mean? I'm, I'm going to be laughing, you know, in the next life that the earth really was flat or RV is going to laugh when he finds out it's a sphere or both going to be wrong. It's going to be, you know, an octagon. I don't know. <laughs> but what yeah. you well, that's the thing no. is, I said, I said it before, but I said what it comes down to it again, this is very important. If you, you know, the, 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 the shape, this is my stance. The shape of the earth is really irrelevant to me. It, it, it to me, it's about uh, the deception of this world, the, the crater. But again, if, if, if believing the earth is flat, it's not going to save your soul. And that's what Bart's perspective. I agree a thousand percent. And that's one thing I will side with Bart o over someone that's um, a flat earth that denies Christ. So that to me, that's more important. I'll be, I'll be on the side of Bart and I'll, I'll say that a uh, flatly pun intended yeah, there may be people. There may be people. Let me say this, RV. There may be people out there who are, you know, uh, in my little group. You could say we we believe the moon landings are fake and that the Earth is a sphere, and they may be offended that I did this interview. And you know, I think they're wrong to be offended. We we, we the main thing is we agree on. See the whole the whole moon landing fraud isn't about the shape of the Earth. It's about the government being corrupt arrogant enough to shoot the thing in a television studio and to embezzle money and to lie to the public. That's what's wrong about the moon landing. You know, that's it. That's uh, yeah. what we you agree about. You know what yeah. I mean? Exactly, Bart. I, I agree. I, I, I agree. I have my stance on it. I think it's to, to, to show the baller, but you have your stance on that. And that's the thing is, again, um, I think it's fantastic. You and I can have a dialogue, uh, be in good terms. And here's, th here's something I want to really emphasize what you just said, Bart. Anybody listening in, they're going to know I'm a flat earther. Bart is not, and, and he has his own stance, but this is about people that believe in Christ, believe in God, coming together with, with their own differences, uh, and it's not going to separate us. We're not going to be yeah, divided. I was surprised this. when RV and I, and I had our private conversation a few weeks prior to this, there were so many obscure things, obscure things that we completely agreed on. It blew my mind. <laughs> You know what I mean? Uh, yeah. so let's not fight over this. I mean, my wife and I go to the same church and we don't agree on completely about the proper theology within that church. You know what I mean? So what? Yes, exactly. And that's the thing is, again, people, people, you know, over experiences, life experiences, things they uh, encounter in their own lives, personal experiences, you're definitely not going to have the, the same uh, uh, you know, outlook on things. And I just look at it this way. It's always, it's always okay to come to new conclusions based on solid information. And, and that's how I see it. I, I think this is like a drill for something coming further down the pike. Now, when we're done talking, I'm going to send you like four links if you want to include them sure. uh, in there. And one of them talks about, you know, planet X, something there's some, there's some other cataclysm coming that I think this is like a drill for. They want to see how far they can push things without people revolting, without society breaking down to a certain degree. I think this is going to blow over for now. And then something else is going to happen. And this has been like a drill for it. That's, you know, China and the U.S. and all those Illuminati people, they're all friends with one another. China's not our enemy. They may be a competitor, but they, they don't want to take over the continental United States, neither does Russia. They can barely feed their own people and keep their own people from not revolting. They, they have their own problems. No one is interested in taking over the continental United States. And that's why these different countries are not really enemies. They're competitors. And that's about it. So they could be in on it for all we know. You know what I mean? I played poker uh, once with some guy, RV. <laughs> he was so much a better poker player than me. He, like, did something for me to think something. He knew I would think it. I knew he would knew I would think it. Therefore, I did this, but then he knew I would think that. <laughs> and so <laughs> he, he was always two steps ahead of me. We don't really know. The main thing is to admit it when we're wrong, not to call people who disagree with us inferior intellectually, like some alternative media sites are doing, and I beg you guys to stop doing that. Everybody is sincerely looking for the truth. So let's stay brothers. Let's not let them divide the alternative media community. Let's stay unified. Let's talk respectfully. Everyone 
has their part of the truth. Like everyone, you know, there's this old fable about five blind guys stumble upon an elephant in the forest. You know, one has the side of it and convinced it's the wall of a house. One has the tail and convinced it's a rope. One has the trunk and convince it's a hose. One has the ear and convince it's a leaf of a bush. One has a leg and convince it's a tree. But if you add it all together, somehow there'll be a truth. And then just remember, the ultimate truth is eternal life, and God will give it to you, and all you got to do is turn yourself in. But keep in mind, very few people have the guts to do that, to admit that their path is wrong, that God's path is right, to change their lives, and to live that way to the very end. If salvation isn't a get out of jail free ticket. You know, RV, it says, you know, you can lose your salvation after you get it. You have to stay faithful to the very end. Jesus said, those who hold true to the end will be saved. So let's conclude that. And uh, maybe we'll do another one and talk about even more that we have in common. Absolutely. There's so much more to cover, Barton. I appreciate you coming aboard. And I want to thank everybody else for uh, joining in. Definitely, um, again, I want you to... Uh, you know, you have your projects coming up. Definitely, um, you have your website, uh, sabrell.com. Um, and uh, anything you else you want to maybe uh, promote, your again, at your upcoming book or any other projects before we conclude? Yeah, I'll just send you a – maybe we can talk uh, on uh, through the previous format that we did prior sure. to, to StreamYard uh, when we're done. And I'll send you the links of those clips that you can include in there. And then uh, just send me a link to this YouTube video when you're done, and I'll mirror it on my channel tomorrow. Yeah, what will happen here is when this concludes, when I end the broadcast, just stay here, Bart, because even though um, I end the broadcast, we'll go back to uh, a private discussion, and we'll get that all sorted out. But again, I want to thank you so much, Bart, um, and everybody else listening in. Um, a lot of people want to hear about um, – I want to conclude by saying this. A lot of people want to hear uh, the stuff about, you know, astronauts gone wild, and we covered that. But I think what, what Bart's getting to, and I, and I, I agree, uh, you know. Maybe you could take a list of questions yeah. uh, uh, from, from these that are typed over here in the window and uh, organize those. And maybe the next one we do can be simply answering all those questions. Yeah. Well, the thing is most, most of them are, of course, going to be about, uh, you know, flatter type things and the challenge or the other things. We, we can definitely save that for next time. I'll have it all jotted down, written down. But what I, I really want to emphasize is, uh, the bottom line is everything we're doing and covering Bart is, is about the creator and, and believing in Christ. And that's, that's, the, that's the end game for all this is not to fall for the world deception. There's a lot of people, I don't want to say names that are covering hoaxes and they're pointing them out, but they're not, they're not getting to the, to the, uh, the point of why they're doing this. They want to create uh, this one world satanic government. Um, and they're all working together now, but it's going to be for all, for all of us to see. And that's the main point is, yeah, we're breaking down the fakery, the fake moon lane. The thing is we live in this uh, this this, uh, this uh, satanic system. There's a creator who has ultimate authority, and, and I believe the earth is a, a proving ground, and, and, and that's what it all comes down to. And uh, with that being said, Bart, I want to thank you again for appearing on my live stream. Everybody else listening in, uh, thanks so much for tuning in. And on that note, we're going to conclude, and I'll leave you with the final words, Bart. Thanks so much once again for appearing on my live stream. Well, I love you, brother, and uh, just remember, uh, everyone has a, a part of the truth. No one is perfect about everything, and let's stay unified, and let's stay focused uh, individually on the goal of reaching heaven. Read your Bible. Read those little study notes there, the study guides uh, in the description, and focus on taking hold of eternal life. There's nothing more important than that. I agree 100%, Barton. Thanks so much once again. On that note, we're going to end the, end the broadcast. Uh, thanks everybody once again. God bless.